you guys, Ginger Cook here, and we're going to be doing a really fun uh, acrylic painting tonight uh, with a, a boat and cocktails and uh, kind of a fall scene. And uh, this is Acrylic Painting Monday with the Ginger Cook. And, you know, we're going to have a giveaway or two and tell you some fun things that are coming up. And you can't miss this show. It's going to be great. Stay tuned. Ginger Cook, the queen of color, with a blazing brush at the speed of light, and a blank canvas, and a hearty yes and yes, the queen of color, Ginger Cook, and her sidekick, John Little, teach you to paint with acrylics. Ginger, I see you have a lot of canvas out there. I know. These are people think these are paper. This is real canvas that whenever we have a painting that's left over, we just uh, have to paint this left over after we do a painting. We just, well, John just basically takes the extra paint, covers these. And so then when I go to do one of these small ones, like for instance, we're, this is the kind of reference photo we're going to be doing. We're going to add some cattails to this and we're going to make it into a fall scene. So I'm trying to decide what colors I want for the background since I'm not going to keep it totally like that. We're going to change it a little bit. So I'm thinking I have all these kind of, want sort of a fall scene and I could, you know, always fall back and it can always fall back to kind of a dark brown, but uh, that's not as interesting. Um, what could we do that would be interesting? Red. Red. Maybe we'll do red, you guys. Ooh, a nice bright one too. Let's do red. I don't know how that's going to come out, but we'll just amuse ourselves and see, right? <laughs> I have no idea. I haven't hey, painted this hey, before. We'll learn a little bit while we're doing it. I don't it. think we're going to go for the shocking pink, but I think we could... I did that I just in case. Someday you're going to want to do a pink bunny or something. So, someday, right? But right <laughs> now, we'll, um, we're just going to go for the red. And uh, basically, I'm going to just sketch this in just a little bit. Um, kind of back up. This is 6 by 8 canvas. I'm going to say this is kind of where my trees are coming from. Maybe something in here like that. And um, and then this is the kind of little island peninsula of, of cattails that's coming around this way. And I've got this nifty boat that's uh, it's an old boat. Let's see, I think we're going to make it a little smaller here. Here's our boat like that. And um, we'll just, um, you know, just kind of a rounded thing like this, sitting in the water. This comes all the way down. This is not straight up and down. I'm looking at that. This is sort of that way. Now we'll have the reference photo and a and the, grid pattern for you folks yeah, on the, the beginneracrylicartist.com yeah. website. You can join for just four ninety five a month and have access to the YouTube resources. Yeah. How fun is that, right? Well, I assume it would be fun. I think it's it's kind of nice. We we what go ahead and when we get these images, we go ahead and um, they're either one that we've taken a photo of or we have bought them and have the rights to you know teach them, and uh, which is I think kind of nice. So there's got the main thing is this little boat here. And, um, That's really the subject. The, yeah, the subject is the boat, and there's some other stuff here. There's water kind of coming around this way, our boat. And I'm not sure I have this boat long enough. I think I'm going to make it a bit longer. That's easy to do. Let's just give us more boat here. Yeah, let's just curve that up there like that. Kind of. What I like about it kind of curves up like that, kind of goes up. It's not level. Then it goes up like that. So, Alright, so there's the boat. We're going to have some cattails here. This is going to be some background, which is the going to be some fall. We're going to have some reflections in here. We're going to have a few more cattails here. And um, this is kind of how we're going to do it. So, now yeah, we put out um, some paint. And um, this is the Salvador paint. We're going to be giving away not only the painting that I'm doing tonight, but our 
uh, but we also have a couple of others that we, we kind of went through our list of artwork that we thought might be fun to do a giveaway. Somebody's going to win a nutcracker tonight. That's going to go to somebody. The there, lady. It is snowing, though, for some. Yeah, yeah. And um, I think we'll have to keep, we kind of, well, Halloween's not, we got it off to you in time. Um, we've got just some simple ones. We got another simple one for Halloween. That one. And um, and this one. So we're going to give away four paintings tonight. That's kind of cool, isn't it? Four. The, the one I'm doing and these th these three. Plus the Salvador paint, uh, Salvador paint kit. I'll put these over here so we don't lose track of them. And they also have a, if you buy it from the Amazon, they have an additional coupon code right now. Be happy 10 off. And you can use that in combination with our Ginger Cook 15 off and get 25% off. off these. So, I mean, that's amazing. I mean, that is such a deal for, you get the 24 paints, the tw you know, the 12 brushes. This is a deal. I mean, it's a deal. And you can see these are the colors I've got out right now. And um, I'm going to put some uh, titanium white here. And uh, let's just see how we do, right? So... Again, I want this to feel kind of fall, like a fall scene. I want to stick kind of to some golds. The yellow oxide is a ochre, yellow oxide, ochre. They are good gold colors. I'm going to come up here on this painting like this and just kind of come in there, there maybe like that, do some gold. I want some of that red show through. We're just going to do that. We're going to keep this kind of impressionistic. Yeah? Yeah, should we do that? Keep it impressionistic, you know. We already have a photograph after all. Let's um, let's try a little bit of uh, violet and um, and and vermilion. That's kind of an interesting color, kind of a dark color here. Something dark and kind of some purpley colors down here on the bank. Yeah, put that down here like that. We're just using a little uh, ruby satin silver brush that's um, three eighths inch. It's kind of one of my go-to brushes. Um, everybody carries these. They're by the Silver Brush Company. Um, we've been recommending the brushguys.com because they have consistently kept their prices lower. Occasionally, you know, one of the big companies will have a sale. But what I love about the Brush Guys is if you use my name, Ginger Cook, all one word, they'll give you an additional 5% off. And I kind of like to shout out that, to the people that value the fact that as YouTube viewers... Okay, um, they acknowledge your buying power and and want your business, and they're willing to give you an additional five percent off that nobody else gets, uh, which I think is kind of nice. And so, therefore, I'm going to give a shout out to the Brush Guys. And it's the BrushGuys.com. Uh huh. And I think I'm going to come up here like that. That was a little bit of vermilion and uh, the permanent violet, and I think I'm going to come on up here on my boat and uh, just block that in too, as long as I've I've got it. As long as you're in the blocking mood. Yeah, as long as I, you know, I'm just sort of putting a few colors here. Kind of feeling my way, as it were, to how this is, how we're going to. You're getting a sense of it. Get a sense of uh, how this might go. Let's put a little bit of ultramarine blue with those colors. I'm going to do a little bit of dark along here. That's oh, right. There's the bottom of the boat here. Just bring that up. That a little bit darker. Here's the um, other side of it. There's a kind of draw our little boat in. I believe that would be the port side. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, well, it's good to know, John. It's always nice to have technical things <laughs> hearing from you technically, right? That's always fun. It's a, it's a very nautical concept. Nautical. It's a, it's, he's being very nautical tonight. <laughs> I want to give a shout out to our uh, moderators who. Have, have come, you know, we, we who have they, eagerly volunteered. They they volunteered, and here's the thing, you guys. We don't, these live shows that we do and the, and stuff. It, it takes a village, it really does to put something going on. And, you know, without John, you know, managing all the technical stuff, there'd be no way I could, um, um, get that, uh, uh, get this um, show on the air and a live show. You need two people. 
and John has all the technical skills to even do the videos. I mean, just, I mean, it's, when I think about it, you know, one of the nice things that John and I have done is we've combined our gifts of the gifts of art, and he has the gift of all the technology, getting the computers, he's a, you know, he's a website designer, does all those great things. And that's really nice, you know. It makes a big difference. I'm going to get a little soap green and add to this color and uh, pull a little of that in there, too. Tammy put... says, I wanted to steal the soap green from my niece's kit, but I didn't. She should have. She'd never know. Yeah, just, yeah. If she'd she... never see it, she wouldn't know. It's a great color. It's a great color. And, um... Just kind of nice. We're just gonna Even though we do realize that's supposed to be sap green, but translation somewhere along the line, somebody thought it was soap green. <laughs> so I know. It's fun, isn't it? Well, translations. You know, you know, things get lost in the translation, don't they? Yeah. Um, let's try All a little right, bit though. of this blue, just a little bit of white to this. That's pretty. Ooh, is that nice? A little more of the titanium Ginger uses white. the 3 8 angle the most, followed by the half inch and then the three quarter five eighths comes in and the quarter when we do the smaller flowers we have them all and I suggest everybody get them all yeah I just I really like these brushes I use them all the time it's very rare that I use anything I have hundreds of brushes and those are the ones I use use all the time which I'm gonna tell you then then the dagger brush too which I which I particularly like that yeah. little dagger brush by Silver, that's a really nice. And you know what else is that the ultimate varnish brush by Silver is really the ultimate brush, too. Yes. And uh, that is a, a marvelous, marvelous brush. Just as long as we're just giving a coat of paint on here somewhere. And we'll just do, do a little of that. So can we answer any questions tonight for people, for folks, John? Only if they ask them. All right. Well, if you want to ask a question, and how you would uh, procure an answer from us is if you put it in all caps, and we don't, uh, we're happy to answer that. There might even be a question of the night. You never know. Occasionally we've been known to do that, too. Yes and yes. Yes and yes, right? Cindy says, what Ginger says, I do, I do. Is that right? Okay. Oh, primary color here. I'm having fun mixing all these kind of blues and just going to start putting in some colors here. We'll just kind of fuddle our way through this. What do you guys think? We'll just fuddle our way through this. Fuddle our way. We're going to fuddle our way through this painting and just add little bits of color. Hard to know how it's going to go. Eventually, it'll be something, right? That would be the whole idea of this. Yes and yes. I'll tell you one thing. When you start off with something red, the thing about it is it is a little disconcerting. Roberta, if you're getting a ginger won't start and getting a circle, refresh your browser or quit your browser and start it again. What does Ginger find the most challenging to paint? What subject matter, I guess? Mm -hmm. That's a tough one. Um, I tell you what, sometimes what I find challenging to paint is um, um, where I'm not enthusiastic about what I'm painting. The most, the most challenging thing to paint is when you're just not in the mood to paint. You don't like what you're painting, and somehow you decided you were going to paint it. You're and going to so, do it anyway. And, and you, you're going to do it anyway, and you can. And I would say that um, lining up for what you're going to paint is important. I'll bring this the, one over the, to you, my queen. Thank you. Um, you know, line up for it, because if you're, you know, every once in a while, I might, for instance, go through a whole list of things I want to paint. And I'm all excited. Then the day we go to paint it, John says, I thought we were painting that. And I'm going, I can't get behind that today. Nope. And, um... No, we have literally, I'm going to say at least 50 to be painted, minimum. Already picked out and queued up. 
All right, are we going to paint this one today? No, not in the mood. Not in the mood. And I think I have to be kind of in the mood to paint it. And um, I'm not that I, it's not that I'm not in the mood to paint, because I am. Just not that subject. But just not that subject, right? So um, then you ask yourself, so that, that becomes challenging. And I learned a long time ago that... Um, that uh, Let's just take a little water on this brush and do this. We're just going to expand our brush a little bit here. Kind of blend some of that. So I, I guess that that was that would be it. Also, mechanical things, not necessarily mechanical things like, you know, I mean, Tractors I might have fun playing it, an, an old airplane, but probably not a modern jet. Because I think it's just what I what subjects I can get enthusiastic about as what I want, right? I want to feel enthusiastic about whatever it is I'm painting. Well, I think it's and it shows in the artwork too. Yeah. So, um, you know, I know when, for instance, when John and I were lucky enough to get to go to Cuba a few years ago, before they closed the place down to Americans. Apparently, Cubans are still there, but uh, <laughs> they're still there. But um, anyhow, the um, the uh, the upshot of it was is that um, um, I, I wanted to paint those cars. I absolutely love. We got to ride in some of those neat, nifty cars. You know the ones they have that they that kept it. And did you know that, for instance, that our our driver told us that um, in order to own a car, unless you're somebody really important there, then you had to your car had to be available as a taxi. So, because most people don't have cars, and um, so I thought I thought that was sort of interesting in itself, right? And they pay quite a hefty tax on it. Yeah, they got, and right come Christmas time, they they get um, they get taxed on the money they make, and they were doing when the cruises were in port, they were doing pretty well because everybody wanted to ride in those cars, and I'm sure that you know, I'm sure when the Europeans come, they want to. Cause these, I mean, no one's seen cars like that unless you go to a car show. Cause, you know, the, they're the what in the from the fifties, right, or something. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's how that's how old they are. Hey, and Jazz would like to know how do you get perspective correct in a landscape? Well, the thing. Let, let's talk about some landscape rules. Cause that could be helpful. Yeah. So uh, the farther things are away, they're grayer. And they're they're less bright. They're, you know the, the the colors get grayer and things get smaller. Yeah. So if you put a giant person standing back here, you'd be a little hard pressed to um, um, have the perspective correct in it. Okay. So you can always grid it on, but um, I, I would suggest reference photos. I know people are just love making stuff up. It just they just love it. Uh, they like to brag about it too. I, this is my painting, and I made it up. You know. Well, I mean, you know, sometimes you're in just the mood to let the paint flow, right? But then if you're painting a person, you made it up, and one arm's too short, and the hand looks weird and stuff. Maybe making it up wasn't such a great idea, right? I mean, it might be, but uh, it depends what your intent was. Now, you know, sometimes you can, for instance, and even if you're doing an abstract, sometimes you can take a painting. That because it still has to balance. Even abstracts have to balance. You can take a painting, and maybe zoom in on a little section of it that has some beautiful colors in it when you zoom in, and just paint that, and that'd be a pretty abstract. But you still have some sort of an idea of what you're doing, and then you can add a few little things. But um, you know, all that still counts. Well, this is fun. I like this bigger brush here. I'm kind of getting, getting a little bit. Um, is that your three quarter? Yeah, that's the uh, three quarter inch, and I think it's um, is that like the three it. quarter? Yeah, Looks three like quarter. It. Yeah, three quarter. John's always interested in the um, what you know. He gets in, he gets caught up in the details of this stuff. I'm going. This is a nice big fat brush. I like this one. <laughs> 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 well, speaking of that, Brenda, one, said, right? Brenda says, I got a set of moppy brushes. Could they be used for varnish? It depends. I mean, the ultimate, mar the ultimate varnish brush from Silver Brush Company does not leave little hairs coming out of it. Yeah. I would be very hesitant and if I bought a, a, a set that was, you know, say, a little inexpensive. Having hairs come out in your varnish is not too cool. 
No. But the ultimate varnish brush, you know, that's the only one I use. Yeah, and it and it it, it doesn't leave any marks or anything. It's it does absolutely a great amazing. Job. It's done. You know, I I have two of them I use in rotation because we do so much varnishing and that uh, they have seen hundreds, literally hundreds of paintings. So that's that's our go-to brush. It's not a cheap brush. It's like an eighteen-dollar brush, but I still have. It's still in a great shape. I use the Art Sherpa soap on it to keep it clean, and it's just like it, it's new. And incidentally, the, the Art Sherpa has more soap now available. I'm thinking that their, their, their soap production has been racked up again. I think you can now get soap from them. Oh, Brenda says it's a, it's a silver ultimate brush set. Then yes, you should be able to do that. If it's theirs, I, I have no qualms with you doing it because that's the one you want. It's a green handled brush. I love the Salvador paints, but the color goes flat when dry. What is Ginger the secret? She has John varnish them. The varnish them. All color, <laughs> all paint, acrylic paintings go flat when they dry. Except the dry. purple. And and you what you want to do is 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 varnish the colors. That's how it brings it back up. You know, um, that's the whole idea behind them. Um, yeah, you want to varnish them. That will make the po colors pop right back up, bring them back to life. Yeah, that's a you know that's a secret for. Anything, any of this kind of stuff. The coupon code for the Salvador Paint Kit, you can use both codes. So you can end up getting 25% off. off. Look, they're just fun. If we're doing giant paintings. I mean, I'm, I'm going, I, you know, I, I have a couple brands of paint I use. I like these for the small paintings. When I'm doing the larger ones, um, I'm doing, um, probably using Holbein's. But they're more expensive, a lot more expensive. I mean, they're big bucks then. You know, I'm either using these or I'm using the giant big bucks paint. Let me just show you, for instance, this is the newest uh, release that's coming out this week in our academy. This is uh, uh, this uh, car. It's kind of done partially with a palette knife and a brush. And this is the Cuba, a red car from Cuba. and um, Vintage Automobile in Cuba. Cuba vintage Automobile. And I, I talked a little bit about that and even gave myself the license plate there for, with my name. And this is in the Academy of Fine Arts. So those of you who are not aware that we have an academy where we do very advanced paintings, we start with beginner, clear to advanced, and there's over 500 tutorials. We add new ones all the time, usually weekly, every 10 days at least. And um, they're just the, this whole gamut of things that you might want to paint. A because, whole what? Gamut. Gamut? Gamut. Gamut? Gamut. 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 A painting. Gamut. Is it a gamut? Might be gamut. I have not heard of gamut. <laughs> I've heard a whole gamut of things. Maybe it's gamut. That's it. But it's you all. You can say there's a lot of them. <laughs> That's a lot of stuff we're talking about here, right? This is a way cool paint. Isn't this neat? I mean, can you imagine this, like you know, thirty by forty up on your wall? I mean, this is a neat painting, and this, and if you're thinking about maybe a gift for somebody for Christmas. You know, that maybe you're thinking about the holidays and cool. some guy in your life in might cars. really love that. You know, so I'll show you some more stuff later. But that's an example of the difference in, you know, pink colors and stuff. All right, so moving along here, we've been just using this big brush and kind of, you can see how this is all kind of coming, coming together, together, though, can't you? Yeah, I can see that. You can see how it's, uh, you know, we got the different. How many coats of varnish do you recommend? Two, two to three. Yeah, for sure, two. At least minimum two. And minimum I'll tell you two. what, years ago I painted a bunch of, I've got some, well, I'll tell you the mistake I made. I went ahead and did some adorable furniture for my grandchildren. Painted Peter Rabbit and all that stuff all over him, you know, just the darling scenes. And then I used um, my, uh, probably about five coats of my gloss medium and varnish and then hit it with a top layer because it's kids' furniture. I hit it with a top layer of like a, Kind of shellac thing that went on top, and it the mistake was I I bought cheap furniture, <laughs> so it it didn't make it through five years of a kid, right? Yeah. I mean, and, and my daughter was kind of crestfallen about it because she so liked the picture, but it just it didn't make it because I mean I really should have used um uh, uh, you know done a, if I was going to go to the trouble to paint it I probably should have thought 
more in terms of heirloom, not in terms of grandma thinks this would be fun and I'd get this table set for 50 bucks, right? You know, probably, you know. But you I'm just think saying more long-term, as it were. Yeah, I guess I didn't think. That was the, that's the word I'm looking for here. I, I couldn't quite get, I didn't grasp the long-term concept. And that was a mistake on my part. You know? So, um, and I wish I had. Um, I wish I had done that because um, you want to think for tomorrow. You want to think for tomorrow, and that, and that was the only thing. And uh, it just didn't really didn't survive the, it didn't survive the the experience of you know a couple of little kids, <laughs> you know. But that's okay, that's okay. And and um, but I, I I could spare that for you, yeah. So, I, and also if you're gonna if you're gonna have something where kids are gonna be playing with it, you know, give give it more than one coat. Do it over several days, and do more than one. And we. For instance, we've done our suitcases and have had great success with that, have we not, John? Yeah, it's amazing. They've really held up quite well. Yeah. And they are not treated with love. <laughs> no. Once they leave our possession, anything goes, and it's gone. Yeah. And, um, yeah, we're not... Yeah, so, well, uh, one time... Sid and I had gone to France. This was back in the, or right around 2000, 2001. We were in France, and we had um, taken a Air France flight. We were in uh, changing planes, and I guess we were at the airport, so we were on a small little kind of... Well, no, I guess we just landed at that airport, and um, we watched the, the baggage. We just happened to be sitting at the right side of the... Um, of the airplane to see our bags being unloaded. <laughs> and and that's I mean, sometimes a, not a good thing. That's, uh, I'm going, holy sm <laughs> smoke, right? Are you kidding me? <laughs> my bag, that's my bag, you over there. Hey, over there, you, that's my bag. <laughs> it would be nice to still have one at the end of this, yeah? So, anyway. You can find the uh, discount code, coupon codes, in the description of this particular video. It has both discount codes in there. So in case you don't go running and buy it today, you can get to it later. Just go to the description, scroll down a little bit, and it's right in there. Yeah. Yeah, it was... Uh, it's also posted in the Facebook group. That's good. Good, good point. Is it? How Good. do you seal a painted suitcase? What we we use the GAC uh, GAC 100 on it. Yeah, we did. Well, yeah, we did that to um, kind of taped around with artist tape what we want the the size of the picture, and then we put the GAC 100 on it, let that dry. That's Golden's acrylic 100 product it's called GAC 100 G A C 100. Put that on the that that seals the canvas of your suitcase. It'll give you a binding surface, and you paint on top of it, and then you varnish it on top of that. Yeah. They've been uh, to China, to Hawaii, to Canada. The paint's still on there. Paint's still on there. And I mean, a couple rubbed off corners, but nothing drastic yet where we have to repaint it. And the nice thing about being as an artist is not like you can't fix it, can't? Right. Is it right? Touch so, up a little later, so it's yeah, you can touch up, up a little nicely. later, right? Is gouache worth trying? It's a totally different medium. It's designed for illustrators, more flat work than this type of work. We got, we bought some, and we tried it traveling. In fact, I've got like three or four videos on Ginger Cook Live on YouTube on, on gouache. You can see what I did. That, it was okay. But and, it's too expensive to use this way. It's not designed for this style of art. There's a problem with it. This the 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 Salvador is worth trying to me. Oh I heck mean, yeah! I would just say you know get get a good tight you know heavy body pr professional titanium yeah. white. Get a golden you, white or a Holbein titanium white. And you know white. you could still get you could still use if you wanted to a, a yellow box a, you know cad yellow medium from a you know from a high end. Color. Well yeah, if you can do a lot of flowers and stuff, you might want some of the special. Some high end you know colors, but. Um, that's Why right. two different codes? Because Salvador keeps our, our current one, our Ginger 15 off, is currently running. And they have a Be Happy 10 off right now running, so you just combine them together. 
You apply one, then you apply the second. Is that nice? I mean, I, come on, you guys. That's pretty cool, right? Yvonne got her Salvador paints all the way in Australia. Miracles do happen. Thank you. You are well, welcome. It is a miracle because I don't think any airplanes are running anymore. Uh, Ginger, great hair tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. All right, we're just, um, you can kind of see where we're, it's getting, you see how we're kind of layering it in? You can kind of, you know, just, something's either a light or a dark. I guess that's the, that's the profound <laughs> thing I'm going to share with you today. Well, that's the secret of the day right there. It's either a light either or a dark. a light or a dark. So, you know, really, when you think about it as an artist, what, what are you really but pattern solvers? You're, you're, if you're, you're, you're really basically solving uh, patterns. And um, and that's what you want to be doing is is um, um, uh, being aware of patterns and uh, where the lights and darks are. You could literally turn something completely upside down and just paint the patterns and probably be okay. Boy, we met a, uh, an artist in was the Bahamas. Yeah, that's what she, she does. She paints. She has to paint upside down. She can't paint right. She side really up. can't do it without doing that. And um, you know, and I'm not criticizing well. her. She just—that's her thing, right? Is yeah. watercolors for beginners? No. No watercolors. Watercolors is not for beginners by any and, stretch of the imagination. No, they're not. They're you know, you can start kids forgiving. off on watercolors simply because they don't—they uh, don't make a mess. And a lot of people will start. Most kids are start off on watercolors. I started off with watercolors because I like the color. Yeah, and there's a different effect on it, but um, it's totally different. The, the trick is that the trick is with learning anything. If you were going to take up tennis, you just wouldn't go out to the court and bang balls around, hope you got them over the net. You'd take some classes on how to do it. If you're going to take up skiing, same thing. Um, and the, the, you'll get so much more out of an, an art lesson um, <laughs> if you know, because then you get the, you get the right way to do something. I mean, there's just there because it really is literally is a right and wrong way to do most things, and um, that's very profound too. Well, it's okay, but it's true. Just, just no, it is. There is a right and a wrong. And um, you know, the more you, um, uh, you know, work with that. Uh, Brenda has a question for you. Speaking of right and wrong, does Ginger have any advice for painting wall murals? Um, yeah, I do actually. Um, do I, I did my whole when my first grandchild was born. Cinema and I went all out and I made a guest room in the house and did all four walls. And uh, what I did was I went to Home Depot and for things like skies and things like big areas of green, I got some oops paint. You know, I use regular acrylic house paint and saved my expensive acrylics for the details. So as much of that as I could put on. You know, um, I did. And the other thing is, is that um, the, the most, well, if you look at where people do wall murals, mostly you're talking about um, uh, from the, you want to see something from the, um, um, oh, I don't know, a few feet off the floor. I wouldn't go all the way down to the floor and start, you know, waist high and go up or something there's some thoughts about and and get a few books there's some really good books out on how to do murals from people that do that all the time and um and i i suggest you know just don't try to reinvent the wheel you know see what tips that you can get from people if you're planning on doing a mural Oh, we haven't put the cattails in, but I'm kind of liking our silly boat, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm working. Yeah, you know, this is slow, you guys. I hope you don't mind, but we're just. Um, what I Chatting feel like. Along, just enjoying the day. We're plugging along here. Yes and yes. It's fun with. I like all these little colors because I can then I can mix them and make some very unusual colors. Yeah. They do have some great colors, right out of the kit. They do. <coughs> there. So, um, I'm 
I don't want to get too crazy here on us, you guys, but I think we can. We're doing pretty well, yeah. I think you're doing marvelous. I'm thinking. I'm having fun with this boat. I got to tell you, I'm having a good time with this boat. Is this a particular technique with the smaller strokes? Um. Well, it's impressionistic, I suppose. And um, I'm doing a lot of layers quickly. I mean, you can kind of see from the, just give you a little, get an idea, this is what we're doing. Except I wanted to have more fall colors. So we did the red. The red is, has kind of a nice glow to it, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I it's, think that's a wise choice for what we're doing to it. You know, I think, I'm thinking of fall colors, but, I, but red and green are compliments. So I may go back to... And turn you into a bit of a liar, and I may go back into the greens because of the red, and put a little bit more of the green in here, because red and green are compliments. And now that I've thought of, it, now that I've picked a red um, a background, you can um, get away with that. I can, I can. The green is is rather good. Do you know what you use for the blue gray water? Yeah, we just did, did the, you know, what gray's blue is the vermilion and um, brilliant blue or and, and white, you know, kind of grays that, right? Any yeah. advice for painting plein air with acrylics? Don't do it. Take a picture and go home. <laughs> uh, depends. Uh, so much depends on... Um, where you are. Where you are. I tell you what, it just, it really does, doesn't it? So Did much you... depends on, on where you are as far as... Um, Humidity's got to be your friend for that one, right? Yeah, your humidity stuff doesn't dry. Um, it's just high it's just, humidity, low heat, comfortable weather. You know, it gets hot. You got to carry it around. Find water. And, uh, people can get kind of ugly. You start dumping paint water places. You know, they go, "What are you doing? <laughs> Whew, not nothing. No, I do not. I'm not doing anything. Why not you nothing. ask what I do? Right? I doing nothing. Right? But um, again, people can kind of. They can get a little um, uh, possessive of their stuff. And, you know, you, you think, where can you go paint? Well, in a park, maybe, something like that, outside in the woods. That's all very well. Uh, and if you're going to do it, go with a buddy. You know what I mean? Get Have a buddy system. In the world we live in today, I don't think it's necessarily the best idea to, um, to go out painting willy-nilly by yourself. Yeah, you don't want to go willy-nilly. You don't. Yeah, no just, willy nilly out there. Mm. No, no, no willy nillies, right? No. Mm. Um, I would say that would be one thing. That that's. I think that's some pretty good advice too, don't you, John? Yes. Yeah, this one uh, we did start off with a reddish, reddish orange yeah. underpainting. Yeah, we did, right? We did. But it's um, it's sort of fun. Again, so again, someone will win this painting tonight. And. Um, one lucky viewer who's in our lucky, live and, studio and, and audience. And also one of the Salvador, plus three other little paintings we're going to be getting through. Plus the Salvador, we've been sitting here all night just doing drawings. Yeah. So, you know, that's kind of fun too, yeah? You just so, never know. You don't know what people are. Um, I haven't dried that green before I put this light on it, light color on it, but there, there you go. Um. Okay, let's just come on up here like this and suggest some sort of... We're, what we're saying in the background here is that we're doing that effect where we're just sort of blurring the background and not talking about it too much uh, because we know we want some cattails back here. In the and, back? Uh, the, the, well, there's going to be the right here and they may overlap. Oh, in the front, yeah. So we're going to have a little of that. Some of that red might show through. Um, sometimes if you haven't painted anything too much, you can take your um, palette knife and scrape like some little thin trees. It can be very effective. Look at that. See? Just kind of be fun. A little trick. Just scratch them in. Just scratch them in. Kind of do it a little sooner than I did, but if you think you might want to do that, you know, kind of put the paint down there, kind of scratch them in. And I think I had some of this pretty color, too. I kind of like this. Some of this little bit of this orange color, but that's Maybe not. That wasn't the color. Were you the color? I can't remember now. Where did we get you? We got you. Oh, maybe we mixed you. I bet that's what we did. We mixed you. A little bit of orange. That's what we did. 
I just again, I want to don't want to say too much in here. Uh, just just want to suggest there might be just something back here that's, that's planted, and um, that's kind of neat. Yeah, cool. mur murals are fun. If, you know, if you're going into the mural business, um, then that's a different deal. The, um, the, but I, I think that, a, you know, when people have new babies, they they kind of... As opposed to old babies? They, well, I'm saying that the, you know, the sense that, like, the fourth child, nobody cares about the murals anymore. <laughs> but the first child, everybody's going all out for. Yeah, first child uh, gets everything. The first child kind of does, doesn't it? Kind of does get, kind of does get everything, and, and so there's this feeling of, uh, you know, if you're gonna, I, I would say if you were thinking about murals, you might want to think about the, the second child, the first child, John, because the sixth the, child, first one, the oh, first, first one, because if you know if you're gonna do it for, um, you know, maybe you were thinking about that might be a good way to, to pocket a little extra, um, cash in this time of. Um, uh, when people are fixing up their houses and there's a little uncertainty in the world. Yeah. Phyllis would like to know, all the straight down strokes for the water, is this the easiest way to paint water? One of them. We have a Wave and Water Master Class, Phyllis, and, um, and there's a lot of different ways to paint water. And what we're doing here is um, showing you a couple. Right now, you'll pretty much you'll notice that all the brush strokes are going down for me um, at this time. And um, uh, let's gray that water a little more, a little tiny bit more. Um, vermilion, there he goes. Let's kind of gray this water back here. John, what are Ginger's top five splurge colors and paint brand to have if you were treating yourself? Well, they're all Holbein. It's going to be all the flower colors. And that luminous rose, for sure. Luminous rose is probably number one. Mm -hmm. And then she has a luminous, there's a yellow. Yeah, the, yeah and the marigold's really pretty, too. And the too. marigold. It's all the flower colors. I guess you have to pick what is your subject that you mainly paint, and, you know, the gingers is flowers are very colorful, so she's going to get all those extra bright colors. And Holbein's yeah. is the richest pigment. I really like diazinine purple. If you guys don't have diazinine purple, I think that's a color that's... I thought that was kind of a standard. That's anymore. a standard color, but a lot of people don't buy it. Oh, you have to have that. And it's just, it's really, it's a little bright all by itself. You have to tone it down with a little yellow, but it's really kind of a marvelous, marvelous color. I'm liking how this, uh, this boat's showing up. We haven't even put the cattails in. Now you'll notice that when I want to do some, um, it's true I've been making all these up and down strokes, right? But sometimes you can go across then. See, you can you have all the up and down strokes, and then you just do a few across, like that, to suggest shadows. You know, see, I've got that shadow in the boat, and you see how a few up and down ones, the horizontal ones. Uh, th then kind of make it feel more like water, yes? It does indeed. Yeah. I'm not getting a newsletter, why not? Um, well... You want to get them because we're really being good now. We're, yeah, we're the doing second more, one, the we're second doing edition. More water, we're doing more newsletters, you guys. We're doing real newsletters. So you're getting, if you get the announcements, if you get the YouTube announcements, that's the same program we use for the newsletters. Newsletters come out every other Sunday. So this Sunday will be the second one we're doing in our new series. We're trying to get ourselves. And, and this one's going to show you how to pack your painting for shipping. Yeah, John's doing a new new video on how to pack your paintings for shipping. Also, starting the 1st of November, we're well, going to Sunday. do it. Which is this Sunday, we're going to show you, we'll have our, our fall larger auction paintings. You remember we did the live marathon painting a few weeks ago. We just did the little paintings and sold them, but now we're well. We are we'll have the live. It'll go for a couple of weeks, and um, the auction, and we'll have some of the bigger, some of our bigger paintings from this year that people have been asking about and wanting to know when we were going to start uh, making those available for sale. So we'll have that. And a few we'll have small a couple of those too. in the newsletter, and hopefully they'll be all on the website where they're supposed to be. I'll be starting. And to you'll be able that. to see them. Also, the pictures that we're doing, you know. Ginger is the wave and water, more for advanced artists. 
Well, in a sense, if you were very beginner, just beginner, beginner, I wouldn't do it yet. But we have some water in our regular, we have some water paintings in our regular uh, uh, academy lessons. There's a lot of paintings with water in them. And I'd say try a few of those first. You know, and then there's nothing wrong with, you know, trying to, um, you know, do some uh, 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 more more of the advanced paintings. But we do we do an awful lot of different things. Like for instance, uh, do I have a? Uh, uh, let me just show you, John. Back out a minute, would you? In just one minute. Yeah. Is was this one wave and water with it? This was both, right? The one with the snow. That we were going to give that to both, right? Uh, no, you ended up going wave and water only. This is wave and water only with mm -hmm. the, with this one. Yep. Okay. All right. So this is an, a wave and water uh, painting, and uh, even though it's a snowy scene and there's not a lot of water, so this would be a fairly, um, you know, beginner in a sense. This one, yeah, that's one of the easier wave and water that we have. You do a lot of blending with that one. A lot of blending, but you've got to be able to, you can't just have water, you have to have land around it. So that's going to be a new, that's a new wave and water coming. Conversely, this one you want to back out. This one is a, will be a box of cookies, a very advanced lesson that's coming up um, soon. And that will be, because we do one new release a month, every month, and that will be a wave and water coming up with Venice. So, again, this is probably our third Venice piece we've done. So, so many different ways to paint water. We have oceans, we have all kinds of things. Okay? So, I mean, that would be... But see. you at least have to have your basic skills down before you tackle the wave and water class, for sure. Which would be blending, being able to grid would be a good idea. Yeah, you want to be able to grid and so forth. That would be... Oh, th I, I meant to tell you that just throw this one out, John. You need to put it over my pile. Well, put it somewhere. Where would you put it? Up on top? Yeah, on okay. top. Um, I will play with it. Um, that's the zinc white. One of the things, you see how kind of that's bright back there? I can take a little bit of this zinc white, which is a transparent white, and come over here like this. Just soften this. Just push that back a little bit. Just there we go. Let's, let's do a little of that and just a little bit of that in here too. All right. We'll put a little of that in our water tank. Just brighten something up. And I think I still have to push that back a little more. So let's put a little. Uh, a little gold green right here, back here. I'm a beginner. What is what what is gridding exactly? Do um, we have a gridded painting, a picture laying around still? Did you do a grid for this one? No, I didn't do one because I didn't think you were going to use one. Well, I thought maybe for the peeps. Oh, I did, but I didn't print it out. Okay. Well, gridding is where you. Uh, gridding is as old as paint. As long as people have been painting. People have been gridding, and, and gridding is where you, where you take a picture, like and and do a, you know divide it in half, divide it in half, and so on, a fourth of that, and then you do the same lines on your canvas, and then you draw in the, each box, like for instance, this little box would just have this part of an apple, and um, so that's what gridding is, and you know, I always it's tell how you people, enlarge or shrink things. You can yeah, you can make things bigger or smaller, and um, Okay. Yeah, this is coming down nice, right? Yes and yes. All right, so I think I'm going to put in some cattails. And I want some dark. So I'm going to use that dark green and a little bit of um, ultramarine blue. That soaked green and ultramarine blue. I want to say that I've got some cattails coming up here. When you're doing something like that, be aware of the direction of the... Uh, the the plants. So you're not making a picket fence. And um, John, is there a separate pricing for the wave and water? We have wave and water by itself currently, or you can add it to your VLL membership. 
Yeah, and if you're a senior... If you look under the sign-up sign up, uh, link on the website, gingercooklive.gallery, you can see the pricing. They won't be available... Wave and Water won't be available separately when the new site's done, I don't think. So if somebody has it and they get moved over to the new site, they'll be able to keep it. But we're not going to probably be offering it separately. Sally, thank you very much for the Super Chat donation. Thank you, Ginger and John. This is very nice. We appreciate that very much. And what's happened, I'll tell you what, a lot of our current Academy friends have have found themselves unemployed or their spouses unemployed and times are tough because uh, the country hasn't gotten back to normal yet and um, what we um, so we we totally appreciate um, you know so it would be we thank you very much for the um, um, you know any uh, contributions coming our way we appreciate it very much we like to keep these going and keep our Monday shows going. And uh, we appreciate, like I say, we appreciate it very much. Eva asks, are you supposed to let the texture of the paper or canvas show through, through the paint or sand it and make it completely smooth? Well, it depends what you're doing. That's how I was going to answer it. It just really depends on what you're painting and what, my, what, you, what you know, really so much depends on what you're doing. And, um, uh, the mostly, you know, we'll do an underpainting, and um, and you, I don't, you don't want the white canvas showing through. You want a color on there, you know. A textured, a textured canvas wears your brushes out, and also it's very difficult to do fine detail with you have a textured uh, canvas. Yeah, so uh, those would be some good reasons maybe why you might want to. Um, um, so you want to look at your painting. If you have a lot of detail in the painting, if it's going to be one of those kind of paintings with a lot of detail, fine detail, you want a smoother surface. A painting like this, so very impressionistic, you can go with a more coarse. But you're still going to sand the canvas a little bit just to get the, the sandpaper feel off of it. Palette knife painting, I seriously might want texture. Yeah, sort of grab the paint. I'd, I'd want probably want texture, and it and depends on the canvas. Even sand it. It, it depends on the canvas. Some canvas is so crummy; it doesn't matter what you do to it. <laughs> I mean, there is really that. We've the, had some of those. Then, and you know, uh, we hear people, you know, kind of, you know, talk a little bit about that. But there's, um, let's see, yellow. Oh, sorry, this is. Um, I think I want to think these a little bit more gold than I have them. Oh, the rubber trays that Ginger's using now. Can we get those at Amazon? Aren't these great? I kept having things fall off into my paint. And they're actually for the kitchen, I guess. But they're perfect. Well, they're for they? anything. Well, for anything. But I really like them a lot. Slide over a little. So can... They're about 12 inches long. Yeah. Most of the brushes will fit in there. Dagger's a little long because it's a long handle. So it doesn't fit in there very well. But it does keep it from falling into the paint when it's right next to you like that. Do you guys use liquid gesso or paste? Liquid gesso. Okay. Why go through the extra trouble of paste? I guess that's going to really, no, nah, I wouldn't use paste. Liz bought one of the rubber trays, and she loves it for her brushes. Oh, you got one too, Liz? They're cool, aren't they? They're, um, I think they're just marvelous. You know, I mean, really, honestly. Um, I think they're really just super. Let me slide over so you guys can see one. There you go. almost the full picture. There it is. She has two of them. Well, she has three of them. She took mine. Yeah. Well, but I originally thought they'd be nice in the kitchen. And yeah, then when I spied them, I'm thinking, no, wait a minute. <laughs> wait, so wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait. 
scarf to before I even had a chance to even try it. I did. And, um... Gone. I did. I thought they would be... I don't know if we've added them to our Amazon store yet, but we will, for sure. Thoughts on hog hair brushes for acrylics? Uh, they're all right for some things. But I'm well, we use, the, we use the round one for clouds. Yeah, for clouds. They can take a lot of abuse. You can really scrub with them. They're a good scrubby brush. Those are look good looking cattails. Did my little picture help you like fade it for yeah, you? Yeah, the little cattails. That, that, that helped, didn't it? I think so. You think? I think it did, right? I think it's looking good. Kind of a very impressionistic. Uh, thanks. Yeah, this is um. I'd like to thank Joanna for the donation that came in through PayPal. I do appreciate that very much. Well, thank you, Joanna. That's really kind. Can we answer any questions? That's perfect. Would it make it harder for the paint to stick after sanding? No, because we're still painting over it. No, it doesn't. Because you're lightly, know. you're lightly sanding it. You're just knocking off the bumps. But you can feel it, and just put, just rub your finger. I did a couple of videos on it. They're up in the Tech Bear channel on sanding your canvas. Yeah, they're really good. If you're not subscribed to John's channel, the Tech Bear channel, all that is is um, the Tech, Tech Bear channel is just the questions you guys have asked about how to, how to watch the. You know, things like how to watch the uh, videos from YouTube on your television or how to get your camera, how to, you know, I mean, how to post your pictures on Facebook. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. Judy's even done some for us. Uh, just you guys ask questions. You know, it's like Groundhog Day keeping answering. So we, we tell you, okay? Amazon is not taking the be happy. Are you in the States, U.S. or Canada? I don't know if that's U.S. or where that is. I didn't get a chance to try it yet. It may not be in effect until tomorrow. She just said, let them know it's available. So I, I thought it would be activated by now. And that may be a U.S. only. I don't know. So I'll need a Canadian person to go try it. Janie, if you're not doing anything. John, is Ginger using the iPad holder that you have in the store? Yes. The one that's not a swivel? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that was mine, too. No, yeah, mine's downstairs. Yeah. I took your Wait a minute, I'm, hey, <laughs> I'm losing out here. But yeah, so sad, you are. You we are. are getting a troll tonight. Thank you, moderator, for being on the ball. I don't know why all of a sudden we're getting up there in the world. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Why would we get that? I don't know. Let's get that top of that over there. Top of this. This has got to be at an angle. This Lynn was on the Tech Bear channel today. Great channel. Well, thank you, Lynn. It is. I mean, it, I'm telling you what, John has the most interesting. And then, if you want to know what personal art coaching is like, we have probably 20 examples of personal art coaching up there that you can see what I tell people to do. You yep. want to see what that's like. Um, that they that they said it was okay if we if we you know shared yeah, we it. Share it, yes. So, um, yeah. How do you know, friend? Would like to know. How do you know how much of the red background to let show through? Well, you're the artist. You decide. Yeah, I'm just kind of. I like this rule. little bit of red, right? A little bit of red right there. I in this particular painting, the way she's done it, I'm kind of liking how much she's leaving. Yeah, I do. I like a little bit of red. You can, of course, you could. It's put become a part of the painting. Yeah, it becomes part of the painting. You know, it does, doesn't it? And um, uh, I kind of like. Yeah, I kind of. Gonna hate to see this one go away. I know. This is that. This you know. You always say I start these, and you go, "Wow, well, this is kind of <laughs> cool, Ginger." <laughs> this is coming out a little too good. <laughs> oh, it happens once in a while. You know, but I look just even just even a little added red here just. Why not, right? It's kind of, I mean, I think it's sort of kind of fun. It gives it that fall. 
yeah, it's just we, we did it without having it um, be too much. And let's see, let's pull a little. I'm, have, I'm just, you know, part of it, what you've got to say, I had somebody, very ancient person, tell me this. I was like 18 and she was 27. <laughs> oh, that fed, is old man. Know, she was fed, fed one one foot, foot in the grave. One foot in the grave, man. And, uh, but I remember she was an art teacher and we were um, living in Aspen and uh, at the time. And she was not currently working as an art teacher, but had been taught in high school and stuff. And she said, always ask yourself, what can I take away and not ruin the effect? That was, what can I, just because just it's in the photo doesn't mean I have to put it in, in other words. What can you take away and um, not ruin the effect? Yeah? And so yep. that's what you're going for all the time. Basically, what can you leave out of it is not changing the story that you want to tell. Yeah, exactly so. I mean, you know, does it... Uh, it, Just because it, it's in the picture doesn't mean it needs to go in the painting. It, exactly. It may not need the kind of detail that you're that we're we're looking at here, right? For instance, like I can't believe you have my stand too. Yeah, I have all kinds of stuff of yours. Wow, you should <laughs> totally too bad. Otherwise we'll be married. <laughs> yeah, exactly so. Hmm. Put that little lighter right there. There's a little dark edge here on this. Here, where's my dark edge on this? Well, we're not experiencing any buffering, having a good feed, so if you're buffering, I would quit your browser and restart it. It would be a safe thing to do if refreshing doesn't work. Yeah. Could just be your internet connection, bad weather where you are, whatever it may be. That's really, this really came one out really nice. I, I, I'm, uh, I'm liking it, you know, I have to say, I kind of like this, it just, it, again, it doesn't have to say that much, it just has to say a little something, which I feel like it does. Now, if you want an opportunity to win one of the, how many paintings are we giving away, four tonight? Four tonight, we're going to win total. four paintings tonight, you guys. Make so, sure you do enter. Yeah, four tonight. Hey, you don't want to share the good stuff with us? Who said, share what? <laughs> You don't want to share the good stuff with us? Do a tutorial on it in your school. It won't be the same. She won't be able to duplicate that. No, this is just a kind of a one-time thing. Yep. This she does a, a lot of those. She does a lot of one-ups. Jenny's putting it out there, hoping everyone encourages others to subscribe, praying Ginger and John reach 100,000 by the end of the year. That'd be nice if you guys subscribe. Likes are always friendly. Share these videos with other people. Come join the Academy. You don't have to do it forever. Try it for a month or two. See how you like it. Send your stuff in for personal art coaching. Um, let me give this a quick try. Do you have that painting that we can show of the horses? Ooh, ooh, ooh. My turn, my turn. All right, I'm going to dry this, you guys. Wait. Um, so I can do my now final thing. Now right? I'm ready. Okay. All right, I'm muting you. All right, well, she's off in Never Never Land. We had a Academy member do the Brumleys. I think it's called the Brumleys in Australia. This was during the fires. And we were so proud with how she did it. This is a 48 by 24 painting. So it's one of the bigger ones. And she did, this was Stephanie or Steffi as she goes by, and uh, I believe she's one of our moderators, I, I, I believe so. And she did a fantastic job on this particular painting. Maybe the Queen would like to make a comment before I bring her back. Sure, the, uh, the, um, uh, the Brumbies, which uh, we have, that's one of my favorite tutorials of 2020 is the Brumbies. And, um, you know, we did ours, what? 12 by half 24, I think, or something like that, half that yeah, size, half because of, size. we're limited to what we can film. But um, I'm so pleased that um, Steffi went ahead and painted it large. This is a neat painting. It's uh, the photograph, we have permission to use the photograph from the lady that lives in Australia that actually photographs these wild horses. And she did these right after the fire they had earlier this year in January. And uh, I, think, I think Steffi did an excellent job on that. She sent it in a couple times for personal art coaching. Um, it never hurts to get another person's view of your picture, and particularly if, you know, you get a separate eye, you know, you get somebody that can look at it and just immediately think, well, if you did this, you change that little, make that ear bigger, make this smaller. Sometimes you don't see it when you're painting it. 
uh, we can really be a big help. Um, I'm amazed at the progress that Steffi's made since she's been with us. I, we, she, she spends an awful lot of time moderating. And I don't so, know if she has time to paint, especially and something she, that took, big. she worked on this a couple months, but it's fantastic. And last year she did the ducks, phenomenal ducks. Everybody's doing such a good job. We want to, to take more of an effort to shout out to people how good we think this all is. You guys are all doing. But, especially um, the improvements they're making. And if you want to see what, uh, what some of our students are doing, um, I have a, a, a board on Pinterest, which is the 2020 uh, uh, student paint for 2020 for students. It goes clear back to t 2017, so you can see, you can go back and look at those boards and see, recognize some of the names and see how people have improved. It's really kind of cool. So, you know, check that out, too. Good job, Steffi. Yes? Are you put, putting, what, oh, um, what was I going to share? Oh, yeah, I wanted to have this a little bit higher right there. Just bring that up and maybe a little lighter one. Let's do that. Let's get this lighter one going here. Kind of creating a border there on the side. Yeah, kind of just, uh, I want to pull that up between the... Um, Make sure nobody sneaks out of the painting. Yeah, I know there you what go. Just doing. kind of something like that. You're you know, manipulating make that a bit the higher. eyeball. Yeah, just a little bit higher there. Just a little something. And again, we've got this... I think I'll just... I think we're pretty close. I'm kind of... I'm liking what we've got. I'm just going to pull that out there. This is why I like to dry it, because then I can look Go at that, so I can kind of touches. tint that water a little Make bit. Make sure you have entered now, because it looks like the queen is closing we're on get, it. We're end. getting pretty close to, to being finished here, so you guys. We're doing a lot of giveaways. Just absolutely, very, very close to being finished. And, have you shown uh, everything you're supposed to show, my queen? Um, well, we've got some, I think I'll wait for next year, for, you know, for next, next, time, year. next time to show that, uh, that picture. But I think we've shown a lot. Uh, again, okay. uh, we're giving away... Um, Four paintings tonight. That one there. This one there, and this um, one there, or that one there. This one, and oh, then we're also one. be we'll be doing. Um, these are some fun ones that we did. If uh, I thought this would be fun, the uh, little nutcracker. Someone's going to win that, and uh, we'll try to get these out to you in time for Halloween. Here's a couple They're of our little me, Halloween sketches. If you give sketches. me your address, I'll get them out this Wednesday. Yeah, we'll get them out this Wednesday if you send us your address. If you're one of the winners, get these out for Halloween, and. Um, I, I'm going to take a minute and show you something. People ask me about, um, you know, if you have a painting, can you go back and do something? Like, for instance, this is pretty monochromatic. Here. These were just some sketches that I did in time for a larger painting that we were doing. But I want to show you something real here. I'm kind of and these are probably painted, what, four or five years ago? Uh, yeah, it's real old. It doesn't matter. But I want to show you what you can do with that. I, I think people don't realize that you can go back and... Um, you know, um, let's see. I want a different uh, brush. I didn't want didn't want green. I wanted a little bit of an orange color here. How about that? A little bit of yellow, orange, red, and yellow make orange. Yes and yes. Let's try that over here. All right, make a little orange color. Now look, you've got. You can go back and um, with your paint and touch up something. It absolutely is okay to do that, and I'm um, just going to show you here. This maybe with this a little lighter, get a different yellow. Listen, I've got a bunch of yellow that's all got green in it. I don't want that. I don't know how that happened. I don't either, but it doesn't really matter, right? So let's just say I want. Let's just say I want this to be a little bit lighter right here, right? So a little bit of yellow. Put a little bit of vermilion with it. Going to bright this up. I want this pumpkin to be. A little brighter here, maybe. A little bit more yellow. Okay. I just I want you to see that you can. You're not even after a time. Now I don't say t take two or three years and go back and change your paintings in the sense that the, the, as a progress. You want to see your progress and how you've gotten better. I'd say paint it again. But I want you to know that even after you, you know something's dried a long time, you can still go back, and you know make changes. Do things um, to it. You just, you absolutely can, and it's all right. Uh, you can. Um, Jane would like to know I want to get an H frame easel that can move up and down to sit or stand. What do you have? Oh, uh, step two's, step two easels are the best. Santa Fe step two, so it's called Santa Fe easels, the step, the, not step two, Santa Fe two easels. 
two are is the Is that the one I have over there? Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, no, the one behind me is an electric easel. No, I'm talking anymore. about the one that's over that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, step the two, one yeah. The the step two. In fact, Kim and I were talking about just the other day, and we were saying that... Um, no, these have not been varnished yet. We have not varnished these yet. And but when she we could varnish have painted them, over them, varnish, because of the it, varnish it, we used. It just really wouldn't matter, right? It wouldn't matter. I just, if we I leave, just promise you, it would not matter if we did. Because she's done that before. And, um, yeah, you just... Um, you can just you can do stuff with your pictures, and I just uh, here's a little bit of iridescent orange, and um, let's take that with some you yellow. Make a glow. And I want it, you know it's Halloween, so maybe I want it to, you know, want this one to glow a little bit more. You can paint and over I, your varnish, provided you know what kind of varnish is on it, and the varnish will take it. Yeah, but I mean, look, look, see, you can just you've got the ability to. Um, to you know, maybe add some light here, something, and you know, bring it. What happens when you do that? It brings the eye forward, yes and yes. When you do something like this, you can bring the eye forward. You can uh, push it back. You know, add more contrast. Push something back. Uh, when you're painting something, right? It doesn't. You don't. I, I guess the whole thing was. I thought I had fun just kind of showing you stuff. You're not stuck with whatever. You ended up. Whatever there. you started with, right? You're just. You're just not. Not with acrylics, anyways. Not with acrylics. You can. You can do an awful lot of stuff. If you, this is a zinc white, and um, if you want to say that there's, there's more cobwebs coming down here like this, and maybe over the sign. So you push those trees in the background, right? Maybe. See, and then you get it more spooky. This is the kind of stuff you can do even after you've already painted something. What's that deal here? Wherever there's a dark, there's a light. So if I make this a little darker right here, what happens to this pumpkin? It shows up, yeah? He steps forward. He steps forward. He comes in the foreground. It didn't take much, did it? Because I made that a little darker. Yeah? So don't be, you know, I think this is a great example of um, a little, uh, mm, ooh, to kind of do some, just more stuff in the background, uh, put something further back. There we go. I mean, I, I like that way. You see, we brought that, we brought that pumpkin forward because we made it a little bit darker behind it. That kind of thing, and okay, farther things are away, the you know the closer they come to you. The farther things are away, the kind of the more out of focus. Now yellow brings it forward. Do you see the difference? If you put yellow, that brings your eye forward. Now this is a great. I I did that just to show you that there's the, that's the. If you bring, if you put yellow, it brings your eye forward. If you put a dark color, it recedes it. Can more faded. Be careful about your colors. Uh, that's what I would say here. Let's go, gonna lighten this up a little bit here on this one. Okay, so we brought these forward. And uh, let's see, what other color do I want that I can get easily here? Let's just get out some fresh orange here. If you put a brighter orange over yellow, it'll be a brighter thing, the color, than if you just did it over red, over darker color. See, I can lighten that pumpkin. Isn't it, I mean, you buy a lot, right? Here's a question that came in through the uh, entry form. How do you, how long do you wait to dry your Posca pins before you varnish over them? Uh, I use a hair dryer, but usually the next day. We don't varnish the same day, right? Yeah. But we use a hair dryer on them. 24 hours or 48 hours later. You, you want to use a, a hair dryer on them. Right, you, you sure do that.
All right, well, we added a little more to those. You can see how we, you know, from the little bit we did, how we absolutely popped those out a bit, yes? Yes and yes, just doing that. Okay? Just doing that, pop that, uh, pop those little plants out, those little pumpkins, little happy faces. So anyway, that was a good example of how you might do that. Um, we hope that was helpful. The same, you see, like, for instance, like you take this little nutcracker, he's been, been beautifully painted. Red is one of those colors. If you go over it again, now let me just show you this. Let's put a little bit of orange and red in here. Let's just, red is one of those colors where if you give it a second coat, sometimes you can bring it, you know, you'll, you'll brighten it up, but particularly when you go to varnish it, right? So you can always touch up red. Good thing to know. Always touch up red. So those are, all right, let's, let me just finish the, our, um, uh, our boat here. I think I'm pretty, pretty happy with our boat, just the way it, it's sitting. Again, Why do you have all those paintings out? Could you make sure they all have your signature on them too, please? Yeah, I will. I will. I will. I will. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll just put these here for now. Um, I liked how those pumpkins just popped in, don't you? We'll put that back here. So, I would say we have, um, we have a good, uh, good feel for this. Um, I'm uh, liking what you got there. I'm liking what we We're got We're going to get ready to draw here. We've got 358 souls who are wanting to participate in this. So if you got two seconds to entree vous. Yeah, if, if, if you're ready for us, why we're we're ready for you. Okay, I'm gonna just take a Posca pen and sign this now. I kind of like this just the way it is. I don't want to do too much more to that. Um, oh, I don't think I would. I, I'm liking the effect that you got with it. I like it. the cattails here. I don't want to bring them all over here and keep creating cattails. So I think that's pretty nice. Um, the one thing I don't like is this little bit of gray right there. Let's just fix that. Yeah, one splotch. That one little splotch of. Let's just I thought that's where they had to patch it. Well, it might have been, and then you don't know that. It could have. They might have. It might have patched it, but now it needs to be fixed. Now, now we need to just kind of, kind of gray it out, kind of gray this out right here. Yeah. There we go. All right, I think we, I think we, um, I think we got it, you guys. So, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and sign this. And, all right, uh, I'm gonna go get a drawing from the winner of the boat and cattail. Vicki Rich. Well, where's Vicki from? Uh, North Carolina. North Carolina. And you gotta say it that way too. Well, this this could North be a, this could be a, a lake in North Carolina for sure. Oh, absolutely. Don't you think so? Absolutely. That could be you know something kind of a little bayou something. A little right? bayou in North Carolina. It certainly could, right? That's where Karen yeah. was from, North Carolina, Thomasville, North Carolina. All right, I like the. Um, you gotta say it that way. You don't say it that I, way. I, you're I not like there. our. Um, I like our uh, I like our blues and our greens and our red background, kind of the red background. I think that's kind of, I think it gave it a little something. Yes and yes. Okay, what ne what's the next painting you got up for a grab, my All love? All right, let's, uh, I'll just, how about the Christmas uh, Nutcracker? Nutcracker. Who has won the Nutcracker? Right here. This person here has. Okay. Just, there's Oops. a little bit of white right there. Let's just fix that up here. Whoops. Right there. Let's just top that. See how you can go back and touch something up. There you go. My YouTube. There it is. Somebody's winning the Nutcracker. Looks like John, doesn't he? Come on, you guys. John the Nutcracker. Well, no, because that's the way I got. And I did this in 2014. 2014. Yep. And I will go ahead and sign that too. Is that? Yeah, that's what I wanted you to do. Make sure they all get signed, please. Sure. Nutcracker winner is. Carol Gross. You might ask where Carol's from. Where is Carol from? Fontel. Fon, Fon, Fontano? I have no idea where that is. Congratulations, Carol. Let's what Google does it say she's from? Fontello. Fontel. 
think we're going to sign this one with a black pen. We already kind of have it signed, but I'll sign it right here too. Okay. And, uh, hmm. not sure where that is. It's somewhere in the world. Okay. All right. Who's up next? Our pumpkins. Three pumpkins. Our the three pumpkin, pumpkins. Pumpkin trio. Pumpkin trio. Going all the way back to the other end of the spectrum. That's exactly so. The pumpkin this trio. This one's going to go to Kentucky. Kentucky. Really? Yep. Really. Kidding. I'm like no hot dogging kidding. you here. No kidding. Trio pumpkins. Pumpkins. That's cool. Well, look, these, are, these are names I have not seen before, so we're, we're getting some new people out there. All right, so congratulations. This is fun. These are um, Winner of the these are little six by eight. They're frameable, very nice. Pumpkins. And so it's from Kentucky. And um, is Lisa Ray. Lisa Ray, congratulations, Lisa. Uh, that's awesome. Now what else I got? And our last one is. Um, our, our little pumpkin patch girl. Pumpkin patch girl. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and do the sign again for you. Uh, I wanted to know if you want your name on the sign here. We'll custom do this for you. If you if you want if you want us to put your name on the sign like this, it's in our. We'll we'll write your name on here. What do you think of that? That's kind of cool, right? Well, hope if you're out there. See, I'm going to just. <laughs> Why don't you just see what you can do with just so a little bit of... this is the pumpkin... Just girl. sometimes you can touch something up just the slightest little bit. Uh, and it's so interesting Who to me. Means. You get, you know, you've got a little red hat here. Just put a little more red. Look at that. I'm just, just going to touch that one up a little bit. And... Uh, Teresa Maine. So and, Teresa Maine is out there. Please acknowledge your existence and let us know if you want your sign personalized. If you want us to personalize for you or somebody else, right? Maybe you're going to give we'll this as a put gift. Burbank on it. How's that sound, Burbank? What? She's from Boston. We can put from Boston. Bo she's from Boston. Yeah. All right. Well, that's kind of cool too, isn't it, you guys? That's kind of cool. I'm just going to kind of. So now we have the Salvador paint kit to go. And we have the Salvador paint kit to go, and we're going to be doing that and. Um, Let's see, we've got our pumpkin patch, and we've got the Salvador paint kit, which has, do you have the new one of those? Oh, right here. So this is what you're getting. You're getting, um, you get the, the 12 brushes, and you get the uh, 24 paints plus the extra white. And this is, uh, and then the palette and, and the sponge. Uh, this comes from, uh, this is courtesy of the Salvador Paint Company. We appreciate it very much. They're still doing, they're willing to ship this anywhere in the world. So this is very kind on their part, and we appreciate them very much for it. Plus, they're giving you guys 25% off on their sets on Amazon. which And when you consider they start off at, what, how much is the retail price on these on Amazon? Retail is twenty four ninety five. They're on sale at nineteen ninety five. You do if you get to both coupons of apply, it's down to fifteen bucks. You can get these for fifteen dollars if you Basically apply it's both. Basically, it's a dollar a brush. I mean, it's, you know, I mean that's a it's you know, this. and they're fun. They're fun paints. They're fun acrylics. You saw me use them tonight. That we we've been using them for about a year. They're very very fun. I, I you know I don't want to. They're not my exclusive paints, but I certainly use them for our YouTube shows. And and I really they're very very good acrylics. I like them a lot. And again, if you want, um, this was our painting of the night, which is, uh, I think, kind of fun, right? Oh, definitely. I like, I like our little boat here, you guys. And winner of the Salva, Salvador, Salva. Yeah, the winner of the Salvador paint set is. Who's the winner of the Salvador paint set? Let me put it uh, back. Maggie Harden. Maggie Harden, and where's Maggie from? Maggie hails from Illinois. From Illinois. Well, well, so we're going up to Chicago. So everybody, this is, this is kind of like a bonanza of um, bonanza of, of things. Of, I got to keep track of tonight. Is it not? This is going to give you a clean sheet of paper. I don't know. Uh, Teresa would like to have Maine, M-A-I-N, M-A-I-N, put on the sign. 
right there on the sign. Teresa, it will be there. I will put it on there for you. M-A-I-N. Absolutely. Well, we got you covered. We got you covered, thank you, Teresa. Thank you. thank you. Everybody that won, I need mailing addresses. Yeah. Please. Mailing addresses. Please and thank you. So, all right. So we've got our little boat and the cattails. And uh, I hope you guys had fun with us. These were our other paintings we were giving away tonight. This little thing. So, look how much better that one shows up when you just... Sometimes you got to go back and add some lights and darks, right? And again, these were just some fast sketches I had done for our... Um, Back when we first for, for a larger for the painting kids. I was doing, and, and there you go, back, you know, some time ago. That was our first market, it was supposed to be the children. Yeah, so. But then the adults started doing more than the kids. I was kids. going through my pictures, and I thought, you know what, let's just give some of these away. I think that was kind of fun. Some of our history. Some of our history. So you got some history with Ginger Cook. Tell your yeah. friends. We love Tell you guys. Tell your neighbors. Tell your neighbors. And, um, you know, I'm curious. I hope everyone has a very safe, happy Halloween. We will see you next Monday, and um, will take, we? Well, yeah, and uh, okay. You say we're going to see them. I have yet to see anybody. See you next Monday, you guys. Say good night, John. Bye. Good night, John. Bye. <laughs> One of the features that is offered on our website for and let's try again. <laughs> <laughs> Besides a certificate of authenticity on the paintings, which is really the best feature. <laughs> yes, that alone. <laughs> 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 I did. I said click on the thumbnail. Okay, then you're, then then you're I said, the I said, there's the <laughs> Another great feature of our auction site is the robotic eviction. Um, start again. <laughs> <laughs> you think I drank, wouldn't you? <laughs> All right, sorry. <laughs> All right, here we go. Another great feature. You want to go from the robot again? Or? Yeah, just. <laughs> One of the great features, one of the great features of our auction site is our robotic. <laughs> robotic what? Oh yes. Is the robot the option of? Let me try. <laughs> Bidding system. Okay, that's better because I can't say robot apparently. And bidding at the same robot, time. Let's go for the automatic bidding system. Um, to bid, register to bid. Okay, let me start again. All right. I don't know how so I can't. So close. <laughs> so close. Almost had it. God, they couldn't afford to have me make a movie be there with a fire. Oh, we could never afford this. We could afford this. All right. The, the budget bid for you. And then being able to walk away and not worry that someone has outbid you. Well, that's still good, but. <laughs> By a quarter. Don't worry what? about that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have the hard hugs from John and Ginger. Uh, let's try that again. <laughs> no hard hugs here, people. You're on your own. We had our hugs.